Welcome to Unwired Learning. In today's video, we're going to talk about source transformations. Our goals for this video are to develop the method to transform between current and voltage sources without changing the terminal characteristics. We're also going to learn how to simplify combinations of multiple current and voltage sources. And we're going to learn how to do circuit analysis that is simplified by the use of source transformations. You can see over here on the left what we're talking about when we say source transformation. Here we have a voltage source and a realistic source resistance in series with that voltage source. And over here we have a current source with its parallel source resistance. It is possible through some simple math to go back and forth between these kinds of source transformations without changing the terminal characteristics. And what do we mean by that? We mean the voltage that is across the terminals that these sources are powering, as well as the current that is being provided by these sources. As long as we don't change these two things, then we are not changing the circuit at all. Here we have drawn a little bit more complete version of what we mean by not changing the terminal characteristics. Again, we have a voltage source and its series resistance, and we are connected to some sort of external circuit. In this case, we've drawn our current I and our voltage that is coming into this external circuit that is coming from our voltage source. These two things in blue are the things that we cannot change. We need these to be exactly the same regardless of whether our source is a voltage source with its series resistance or a current source with its parallel resistance. Again, you can see the same I and VN drawn here for the current source and the same external circuit. So if it isn't clear enough, our goal is to provide the same current and voltage in to the external circuit. So let's look at how we can do a source transformation for the voltage source. To do this, we need to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we'll start with a current loop around the source, its series resistance, and the external circuit. We can write this equation as minus Vs plus I times R1 plus Vn, and that must equal zero. Simplifying this equation and solving for the current I, we find that I equals Vs divided by R1 minus Vn divided by R1. Now let's take a look at how we can solve and do a source transformation for a current source. And really, at this point, we're not actually doing the source transformation yet. We're just setting it up and giving ourselves a set of equations to compare so that we know how to proceed with the source transformation. For the purposes of the current source, we have to switch and use Kirchhoff's current law, which as a reminder is basically saying that any currents that are coming into a node need to be equal to all the currents that are exiting that node. So for Kirchhoff's current law for the current source, we can say I sub S minus I of R2 minus I equals zero. Again, solving for I, we get I equals I sub S minus I sub R2. Since the voltage across R2 is equal to Vn, we can transform I sub R2 into Vn over R2. So we can write that this equals I sub S minus Vn over R2. Now since our stated goal was to keep the current the same and the voltage the same, and we now have two expressions for current I, one from the voltage source and one from the current source, let's put these two equations together by equating them. From the voltage source, we have that Vs divided by R1 minus Vn over R1 is equal to I. And from the current source, we have that I equals I sub S minus Vn over R2. Taking a look at either side of this equation, we can now see how we need to equate the different variables. We can clearly see that I sub S must equal Vs over R1 and R1 must equal R2 in order for this expression to remain true for all values of Vn and I. With this in mind, now we can write some simple expressions that will always hold true for source transformations. When deriving the equivalent current I sub S from the voltage source Vs, we can say that I sub S equals Vs over R1. And in either transformation case, we can say that R1 equals R2. To go from the current source to the voltage source, we would simply have to rearrange the first equation and solve it for Vs, which would give us Vs equals I sub S R1. And so these two simple expressions give us all that we need to know about doing source transformations.
Now we're gonna move our attention to multiple sources. In particular, we're gonna move our attention to series voltage sources and parallel current sources. Here we have drawn two voltage sources in series and two current sources in parallel, but it could be any number of series voltages or parallel currents. In this case, it might be obvious that if we want to have a single voltage source that represents the equivalent of these two voltages in series, what we're gonna have is simply a summing of the two voltage sources. However, we shouldn't just take our word for it. We should actually use laws such as Kirchhoff's voltage law in order to prove it. So in this case, let's extend our drawing a little bit and add some terminals and an equivalent voltage across those terminals. Now again, we're gonna use KVL here. We're gonna write the loop equation around the two voltage sources and the equivalent voltage. Doing this, we find that minus V2 minus V1 plus V equivalent must equal zero. Solving for V equivalent, we get exactly what we expected. V equivalent equals V1 plus V2. Therefore, this set of two voltage sources in series can be written as an equivalent single voltage source with voltage magnitude of V1 plus V2. Now let's move our attention to the two parallel current sources. What we want to find is equivalent single current. To do this, our best bet is to use KVL around this node. And that's simple enough. We have I1 coming in, I2 coming in, and I equivalent moving out. And so the equation that we get is I1 plus I2 equals I equivalent. So a set of parallel current sources can be written as a single current source of I1 plus I2. Now let's practice our newfound knowledge of source transformations on an example problem. In this case, our example problem is asking us for the power supplied or absorbed by this six volt source over here on the left of the circuit. And you can see when we look at this circuit, there's no simple way to do any sort of resistive simplifications based on the fact that there are no obvious parallel or series resistances in this circuit. However, we might recognize that starting over here on the right, we can do a source transformation, taking this 40 volt source into a current source with a parallel resistance, which will put that resistance in parallel with this 20 ohm resistor right here. So let's go ahead and do that as our first equivalent step. Again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a source transformation on this five ohm resistor and this 40 volt source. For that 40 volt source, we can say that the source current I sub S is equal to 40 volts divided by five ohms, which equals eight amps. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and draw our first equivalent circuit. Everything on the left remains the same. Our six volts, our four ohm resistor, our 30 ohm resistor, our six ohm resistor, our 20 ohm resistor, our 10 ohm resistor at the bottom, and now we have a 5 ohm resistor in parallel and our 8 amp current source. Having done this source transformation, we can see now that we have two parallel resistances, the 20 ohm resistor and the 5 ohm resistor. The parallel combination of a 20 ohm resistor and a 5 ohm resistor is equal to 20 times 5 divided by 20 plus 5, which equals 4 ohms. Now that four ohm resistance is now a single resistance in parallel with this eight amp source. And we can once again do a source transformation with that four ohm parallel resistance and this eight amp source into a voltage source and a series resistance. So for the eight amp source, we find that the equivalent voltage is V sub S equals eight amps times four ohms, which equals 32 volts. And now with that, we can move to our second equivalent circuit. Again, we have our six volt source, our four ohm resistor, our 30 ohm resistor, our six ohm resistor, and now we have our four ohm resistor and our 32 volt source. And here at the bottom, we have our 10 ohm resistor. Now we can see that we have three resistances in series and we can start a further simplification. We have our six ohm resistor, our four ohm resistor, and our 10 ohm resistor all in series. You might be thinking, wait a minute, is that 10 ohm resistor in series? Yes, in fact it is. And the reason for that is if we think about it, all of these resistors share the same current. And so it actually does not matter whether this resistor is below this voltage source or above this voltage source. If we were to move this resistor above the voltage source, we could easily see that the six ohm, four ohm, and 10 ohm resistors are all in series. If you followed that logic, we now have a six ohm plus a four ohm 
plus a 10 ohm resistor all in series, which equals a total of 20 ohms. And now we can transform our 32 volt source into a current source. The current for that current source will be I sub S equals 32 volts divided by that 20 ohm equivalent resistance, which equals 1.6 amps. Now that we've performed that source transformation, we can draw a third equivalent circuit. On the left, we still have our six volt source, our 4 ohm resistor, our 30 ohm resistor, and now we have our parallel 20 ohm resistor and our 1.6 amp current source. Once again, we can make a combination of two parallel resistances, the 30 ohm resistor and the 20 ohm resistor. The 30 ohm resistor in parallel with the 20 ohm resistor is equal to 30 times 20 divided by 30 plus 20 which equals 12 ohms. And now for our last source transformation, we can take this 1.6 amp current source and turn it into a voltage source with a series resistance, which will put the equivalent resistance of 12 ohms in series with this four ohm resistor. And we will have what we had set out to do, which is have a couple of sources and a resistance in between. So for our last source transformation of our 1.6 amp source, we get that the equivalent voltage, V sub S, is equal to 1.6 amps times 12 ohms, which equals 19.2 volts. And that gives us our fourth equivalent circuit. We have our six volt source, our four ohm resistor, and our 12 ohm resistor in series with our 19.2 volt source. For our last resistor combination, we have our four ohm resistor and our 12 ohm resistor, and that equals a total of 16 ohms. Now all we have left to do is solve for the current in this circuit in order to find the power either absorbed or supplied by the six volt source. It may be obvious at this point, but the six volt source is actually going to be absorbing power because the voltage on the right is higher than the voltage on the left. And so for the sake of finding the current, I'm going to establish a direction counterclockwise in this loop. Using a KVL equation, we can solve for I. We can write 19.2 volts is equal to 12 times I plus four times I plus six volts. Moving the six volts from the right to the left, we can write 13.2 volts is equal to 16 I. And solving for I, we get 16 over 13.2 or 0 0.825 amps. And since the current is going into the six volt source, it is being absorbed. And how much power is that you ask? Well, we use P equals IV to find that answer. So the power of the six volt source is equal to 0 0.825 amps times the six volts, which turns out to be 4.95 watts. And now we can see how through a series of repeated steps, we can take a circuit like this one up here where we can't do any resistive simplifications and we can do a series of source transformations back and forth from voltage to current and current to voltage and so on to simplify this circuit down and find the answer that we were looking for. And with that, that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.